G'day, celebrities love the Miami Grand Prix. The warm weather, the world's media, and a chance to see the best drivers in the world draws them in droves. In this video, I'll run through some of the A-listers that I've shot over the years, plus preview the 2024 race. Miami, May 3 to 5, Hard Rock Stadium sees the world's best drivers taking part in the third Miami Grand Prix. This is a track that's built in a car park and wraps around the stadium. It'll be 30 degrees Celsius, about 86 Fahrenheit, and we'll see the world's best drivers on track for three days, watched by an enthusiastic crowd and a throng of celebrities. This is the third year of the event, and over those years I've photographed the likes of Michael Jordan, Michelle Obama, both guests of Mercedes, Bad Bunny, who arrived with Checo Perez, Vin Diesel, David Beckham. Of course, David heads up into Miami, so I'm thinking, is there a chance that this year we'll see Lionel Messi? Whew, that would be huge, wouldn't it? I'll be putting my feelers out to see whether or not F1 has invited him, or perhaps even a team invites Lionel. Of course, he's going to get very little peace in the paddock because celebrities in the Miami paddock are typically mobbed. Now, have you heard of Surfshark? Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network. It's an app or a browser extension, so it downloads onto your phone or your computer for easy integration, keeping your online identity safe from cyber crims and big companies by encrypting your data, or data if you're American. You can also set up Surfshark to detect your passwords if they're being hacked or used by others. That's a game changer for someone like me that has so many social media accounts. But the feature I get the most gratification from is definitely being able to teleport myself anywhere in the world. Last weekend in China, I wanted to watch an Australian football game on an Australian streaming service. Now, without Surfshark, I would have been doomed. And get this, you can get three extra months for free from Surfshark when you use the promo code KIM. There's a link in the description below. Other celebrities who may pop up, Michael Douglas, uh, an avid F1 fan. Gabrielle Union, we've seen her at past races. Serena and Venus Williams, Pharrell Williams, Will I Am, Lindsay Vonn, Roger Federer, rappers Ludacris, IDK, J Balvin, uh, Martin Garrix, the DJ Dax, Chris Gale, the cricketer, Ivana Knoll, a model, LL Cool J, Queen Latifah, my gosh, it's a huge list, isn't it? Tiesto, the DJ, Jonas Brothers, Tom Cruise, Kabi Lame, Alice Walton, one of the richest people in the world. Another moneyed man, Jeff Bezos from Amazon. And we've also had James Corden there. And funnily enough, he was greeted with a lot of negativity on the post that I put up when he uh, appeared going back to the first year of the Miami GP. I always liked the guy, but he's not well liked by many, according to those comments. Patrick Mahomes, one of my most popular posts, the Kansas City quarterback. Australian golfer Greg Norman, and one of the strangest characters, certainly the most animated I've seen for a long time is DJ Khaled. And where will they likely be hanging around? And maybe some corporate boxes, perhaps even the F1 garage, which is down in pit lane next to, I think, Red Bull. And what they like about that particular facility is that there are few, if any, autograph hunters in there. They're pretty much left to their own. Other notables who may pop up, uh, IndyCar driver Pato O'Ward, other IndyCar drivers like Callum Eilod or Marcus Ericsson have attended in the past, as has Roman Grosjean. This year we have a sprint race weekend, that's sprints, back to back. Also there's F1 Academy and Porsches on track. The track itself is 5.4 kilometres and features 57 laps. Tickets, can you still get tickets? Yes, I had a flick around on SeatGeek. Get them as low as $34 for a Friday. That's, that's giving them away. And at the other end of the scale, 5K for a Sunday ticket. But I still think that's cheaper than Austin and Las Vegas and certainly I did notice this advertising in the paddock in the last race in China, so there are still tickets available. How do you get to the track? Well, first of all, you've got to get to Miami. And for me, it's a 36-hour trip. It's gruelling. Perth to Sydney, five-hour layover. Sydney to LA, seven-hour layover. And I think another four or five to Miami. But I'll do it in comfort, and you'll be along with me on the journey because I will do a travel video. Once you're in Miami, getting to the track, probably best with a car. Although, remember, they do block off a couple of the freeways. The Hard Rock Stadium is about a 50 minute drive from downtown in a, an interesting area, I'll say. The track itself, not pretty. Lots of wire, obviously, because it's a street track. Um, the starting straight, less than impressive. Uh, exit of turn two is nice photographically. And there are some palms and a freeway shot at turns 14 and 15. Oh, and the podium position is interesting. It's on one side of the stadium and it's not the same side as the garages. So when the drivers get out of their cars in 
pit lane. They then come through the stadium in golf buggies to come out onto the podium. There is a fake harbour with all these boats on that you can sit on board and watch the race, and that has come under a fair amount of fire. It's a little cringeworthy. There's a chairlift, which is, I think, the only track with a chairlift. I'll stand corrected on that, but uh, I'm guessing yes. Uh, And the Hard Rock Beach Club is right out there. It's the only track with a beach club, although it's not uh, like a win encore beach club in Las Vegas. I think they'd like it to be, but it's not quite of that quality. It is open to those 21 years of age and older. And I did see some tickets the other day for $1,750 for three days, which I thought wasn't too bad considering they have musicians on the stage performing and those concerts are beamed around the track. And of course, beachwear is more than encouraged. And I remember this picture I put up a couple of years ago and a lot of you went crazy about it, but this is the way they dress in Miami. It's almost mandatory. While on the subject of fashion, we do see some amazing stuff at this race. Teams will often put out a Miami-themed outfit. I remember last year, Nico Hulkenberg was very happy in these colourful Palm Angel suits. Charles Leclerc was in blue, Lewis in sequins on one day, and even Martin Brundle stepped out of his comfort zone with something a little bit comfortable. And I'll be stepping out in this colourful number on at least one of the days. So the racing over the past couple of years... I don't remember it too vividly, but there was nothing outstanding, I think, that happened, was there? If so, comments below. But, yeah, it, it typically hasn't excited me, both racing-wise and photography-wise. But here are the podiums from the first two races. Let's have a look now at the paddock. It changed from year one, when it was all down here at ground level, uh, outside the stadium. And then last year, it went to inside the stadium, which I thought was a great idea, on the AstroTurf. The thing I loved about this was that the crowd could actually come into the stands and sit and cheer, and they would cheer every time they saw a driver out in the open. It was great because our media centre is actually situated at the very top level of the stadium. And we sit in corporate boxes overlooking this, so when you hear a scream, you can actually open the window with your long lens and shoot from the media centre. And where are the driver's change rooms? Well, they too are up in corporate boxes well up in the rafters. So they've got three areas that they can be in. They can be in their change room up there, they can be in their hospitality suite down there, or they can be in the garage. And moving around is quite a lengthy procedure, and it often entails drivers either running or heading out on their scooters so that they're not mobbed. Where should you stay if you go into the event? Well, there's a myriad of options. I stayed at Aventura last year in the Hilton, and it was lovely. Uh, It's only about a 25-minute drive to the track, which is more than tolerable. If you come from the city... Uh, downtown it's probably 50 minutes um, even longer in bad traffic it might be a little bit longer too from south beach although south beach does have a bit more character none of the options are terribly cheap Uh, if you go down to the beach say at hollywood yeah there's some apartments down there Uh, and if you're flying in uh, you can fly into miami international airport or into fort lauderdale I do like Miami for the shopping. There's a great shopping centre not far away from the Hilton in Aventura. And in town, there's just a a myriad of places to shop. And I've always managed to find great food. Somebody asked me what my favourite Miami shots were. And uh, I flicked through my images and I thought, yes, this one. Sebastian Vettel with his undies on the outside of his race suit. Now, I imagine some of you would have no idea what that was about. So let me enlighten you. There was uh, some talk that drivers were going to be checked that they had fireproof underwear on because they have to so Seb thought he'd have a dig at them and wear his underwear over the top of his race suit and he only did it on one occasion and there wasn't that much media around he came from his dressing room to the garage before a session and I fluked getting a shot of him with his trainer running behind and another protest this time by Lewis Hamilton at the Miami GP was him wearing two watches in response to the FIA saying, no jewellery allowed when you're in the car. It was referring to, I think, was it a nose ring he had? Or an earring, one or the other. So that's how he protested that. So in summary, my verdict of the Miami Grand Prix is it's an okay event. It's not my favourite, but I do love it for the glitz and glamour of the crowd, in particular the celebrities that make it into the paddock. I also love it because there's no internet dramas like we had in China in the previous race. Getting in and out of the track is pretty good. Um, Track picks are, yeah, so-so. But for me, the draw card is the people. And I'll be looking forward to meeting some of you people at that Miami GP in a meet and greet on the Friday of the event. Another one. And if you've got any of my books or prints and you want to bring them along for me to sign, I'll gladly do that for you. Oh, and I've just released a brand new signed print collab 
with Fernando Alonso. If you're going to the Miami Grand Prix, I think you'll enjoy yourself. Certainly the Americans do know how to put on an event. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And for those of you not yet subscribed, please do it. And for my best images live from the track and during the week, head across here to my Instagram channel. Thanks for watching. And a stand passionate. The track itself, 5.4 kilograms.